Welcome, I am Halcyon, and this is Hug Nation. Today I want to talk about Madonna in defense of Madonna, or a celebration of Madonna. Oh, hey, before I get going, subscribe to this channel and like, like, like. Madonna posted on Instagram, and I ended up reposting it, and the responses in the conversation that followed were all over the place from hearty endorsements and celebrations and declarations of how important Madonna was in people's lives, as well as some criticisms of who she's been, who she is, the way she spoke in this message, the way that she has handled aging. And wow, I just wanted to, to touch on a number of these things. First, I will share the thing that she wrote. 30 years ago, I published a book called Sex. In addition to photos of me naked, there were photos of men kissing men, women kissing women, and me kissing everyone. I also wrote about my sexual fantasies and shared my point of view about sexuality in an ironic way. I spent the next few years being interviewed by narrow-minded people who tried to shame me for empowering myself as a woman. I was called a whore, a witch, a heretic, and the devil. Now, Cardi B, B can sing about her WAP, Kim Kardashian can grace the cover of any magazine with her naked ass, and Miley Cyrus can come in like a wrecking ball. You're welcome, bitches. And then she had a little clown face. And I was like, damn, good reminder. I am someone who you may or may not know about me. If you have my book, you know that there was a chapter in my life when I dedicated myself to being a sex activist. And I felt like the way that I could be most of service in the world was to try to combat sexual shame. And honestly, this took a lot of courage. And this was all after the era of Madonna so to give some context, I was initially introduced to Madonna and was never a massive fan, but I was raised in the early MTV era where Madonna ruled. And so her presence, you know, influenced everything, fashion, music, culture. There was constantly articles about her as someone who was confrontational uh, to the status quo. You know, she wore a bra on the outside of her clothes and then suddenly little kids were wearing that and adults were outraged that she was kind of normalizing sexuality. And I think about, you know, how fierce you would have to be to continue to show up in that way and confront the church and confront status quo and confront all of the, the slut shaming attitudes of our culture. Now, we currently still have a culture that slut shames, but it is so much more accepting than in the time when Madonna was, was taking a stand. So seeing this reminder of what she did, and I remember when that book came out and it was outrageous. You know, it was, it was like telling the world it's okay to be a sexual person which that was not okay. Sex was something private and therefore put in, you know, protected and, and not shared. She also, through her videos and through the book Sex and through her, you know, behind the scenes things and Truth or Dare, she was one of the first people that I was aware of that really publicly showed gay men in the world and obviously they were in the world but not a part of my world I had zero out gay people at my high school think about what that does to your concept of reality I was so afraid of being labeled gay and I can't imagine what it would be like to actually have this thought that I am gay and how do I come out to a world that is so attacking and there is just, there is, there's no space for it. So Madonna was one of the first people that I was exposed to that made space in the world for unapologetic sexuality in many ways. 
And that unapologetic, I think, is a huge part of why I have this massive respect for her. Some people in this thread, there were people that were critical of the way she has not embraced aging well enough. She has had plastic surgery. She has not, you know, taken a seat and allowed herself to just be a crone. She is, you know, still continue to be a sexual person and uh, lots of makeup and, and plastic surgery and and that she, lost, she missed an opportunity to embrace the aging process and women need more of those examples, which, okay. However, Madonna's job, the, the role that she has worked her entire life to be and, and we, have, we are so grateful to have had this person is someone who fiercely did what she wanted, did not apologize. And in that place of pure radical self-expression she demonstrated not what we wanted her to be not what she should be but what she wanted to be and what she was and the examples of that radical self-expression are so rare and so precious whether they be a prince or a david bowie or a madonna these are powerful powerful influences on individuals and the world i know that I certainly have been inspired by each of those people. And even though Madonna was not someone that I you know, bought records by, her strength and her courage certainly were influential to me. I, in the last 24 hours, I've probably watched more interviews with Madonna than I ever have before and listened to videos. Because as the conversation was happening and people were chiming in, I was l watching links and stuff. And, and I want to... If you are harboring judgmental thoughts towards Madonna, I want to point your way to a short film that she put together out nine years ago called Secret po Project Revolution. And I was like, whoa! I mean, it is so beautiful and so gorgeous and so powerful. Much of the, the voiceover and the audio in it are taken from clips and audio of her speaking to her audiences during concerts during that time. And you think about that. She was a pop star. She saw what she believed to be oppression in the world. And she used her place, her microphone, to speak her truth. Not just her truth about, you know, the shallow things, but about the deep things. And, you know, risked was sued by speaking her mind, was, you know, pursued legally and criminally in all these different ways by different countries. But she refused to be quieted, refused to dim her light. Wow. So even if you don't like the way she presents, you don't like the message she has, you've got to respect the power, the courage, the ferocity. And the thing that I remember as I see people like say, well, I don't like the tone. She's a little bit, why, why? She's, she said, you know, like she called the women bitches. I'm like, that's like, like, I'm Britney, bitches. That isn't, I think, I don't think it means bitches in the way that some people are projecting. I also don't read the clown as the clown emoji as her calling the women of today clowns. She, in fact, the way I read her saying, she, she just described these things. She didn't say it with judgment or negativity. She said, hey, these things that exist now, you're welcome, bitches. Which even if she said it in a derogatory sense or you know, like a, it, it's just wrapped in so much swagger, which is exactly the person that would get us to that place. You don't become the, the champion, the warrior that busts through the status quo without a massive amount of ferocity. And you don't necessarily <laughs> often see that kind of ferocity with the humility that people are asking of her. Now, I, on the other hand, I do have that humility. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to bring attention to the, the, her pioneerism as a role model of radical self-expression and what I believe to be the significance and the importance of radical self-expression in the hopeful healing of our planet. We do not access the divine inspiration if we are afraid of what might come out. 
So when we see people unapologetically allowing it out, that's what gives us permission to allow our stuff out. Maybe it's overtly sexual. Maybe it's goofy. Maybe it's scientifically profound. But we do not get to choose that. We just get to celebrate the freedom. We get to celebrate and show respect for the people that show that courage. So respect Madonna.